Hey everybody, this is Soko Guy. I haven't been around for a while, but anyone that knows me knows I like to get involved with all kinds of interesting tech. And so it's not just uh, radios and mini trucks and or um, tractors and mini trucks and winches and stuff, but uh, I've got a fascination for radios. I've had radios for several years and I know there's a up and coming uh, market in the GMRS segment. So um, a few years ago, a bunch of guys here in the ranch and I uh, went together and, uh, and put together a, a really nice um, repeater. And uh, we can really reach out there. Well, we could. But the problem was is that, uh, like so many of you guys with uh, GMRS, if you're buying the Ocean 50-watt radios and you go to uh, Amazon and you buy the 50-watt um, duplexers, um, bottom line is they won't work. They, they'll work when you initially put them together. I'll show you some pictures, but uh, it's very common. They're real cheap, reasonably priced repeaters, and they work really well, I believe, um, you know, if you're down in the 20-watt range. But if you've got full 50-watt radios, um, you're in trouble. So what happens is internally the high voltages just eat away at the Teflon bushings that are insulating sleeves in there. And so I tried to remanufacture some new ones to put in there a little thicker, uh, take the threads off the studs, the, the adjusting screws, uh, didn't work. Still degraded. So, you know, like everyone else these days, I got on YouTube and sniffed around. Well, commercial business duplexers are very expensive. And uh, so, People don't want to take that route. The only other option I could find was um, through eBay and sources like eBay, you can buy uh, 100 watt, what they call 100 watt duplexers, which looks just like the, the uh, 50 watt ones that are sold on eBay. And I couldn't get any information on them. So I was kind of struggling because uh, a really quality duplexer is going to set you back a couple of grand. And uh, so, I came across um, a link uh, for Intermod, and uh, this guy is a former engineer at a big firm in Canada, and he explained the scenario that we were having with our duplexer to the T. He said, yeah, they, they work up to 30, 35 watts, but um, they just won't last, and no one wants to buy a commercial one. So he designed a one that I hadn't seen anywhere, and um, I believe it's a six cavity. The, the cool thing, why it's sitting in front of me, I just got it in the mail, rode my bicycle to the mailbox, which is electric, so still get a little workout. Anyhow, um, managed to get that back, this beast on my bicycle. I didn't expect it to come in today. So we're gonna open it up. It should be pre-tuned. Um, he gave me the documentation for the tuning, so unless it got really bumped somewhere, um, I'll probably verify it first still before I install it. But let's open it up and see what we get. And probably like most of you guys, if you're in GMRS, like me, you know, you're not really radio hounds and you don't know a whole lot about. Uh, propagation and and what makes a radio tick I had to learn the hard way and I uh, thought I did a pretty good job I got a what they call a SVNA and we tuned our last duplexer just to perfection in the first few times it worked great I was not complaining at all but you know I'd I'd see it slowly starting to downgrade or to degrade and uh, I I really didn't know what to do, so a little more research, and I think probably a lot of you guys with those oceans that are 50 watts, you're going to run into the same problem I did. So, anyhow, this is what I, what I came out with, and like I said, it uh, comes pre-tuned, and you know, you think, well, you know, I, I wanna, don't want to spend more than $100 on a duplexer. Or two or three hundred well good luck with that because you know like some of you guys I'm sure you've done the math 
I did too. Um, this baby, it's about a thousand dollar trip if uh, if you're in Canadian dollars, but you know he's nice enough to give me a discount and converted to American dollars. Um, you know it's it's down in the 650 range. So you know if indeed it works to the perfection as uh, as described, then um, that'll be well worth our investment to not have to worry about our duplexer. We do have a fairly nice uh, four and a half dB gain antenna and uh, good separation. I bought good cabling. Uh, it's it's on a solar system I put in in a Connex container on the far side of our ranch and. Uh, so uh, it, it's, it's, everything's right except for this. And, and we just noticed these starting to go down slowly, getting worse and worse until they didn't work. And then a real nice guy, uh, Dave, at uh, bytwowayradios.com. I spoke with him about it, and he's kind of their go-to guy for duplexers. And um, his suggestion was that we... Uh, remanufacture those Teflon bushings that are internal to the, the cheap ones and, and try again, you know, making the bushings thicker, taking the threads off the studs. It seemed like a logical approach to me that uh, by taking the studs off, if you, uh, and I'll have to show you internally, um, there's a, a brass uh, screw that you adjust. That's what these, these do in the, the cheap ones. And when you adjust it in and out, uh, it, it fits in a metal sleeve uh, to guide the wave. And um, so what was going on was it was arcing from the center pin, this, uh, to the sleeve. And it just found a path eventually through the Teflon bushing that's supposed to be the dielectric protection for it. And so... Um, that wasn't cool. We tried to, to do that, make the bushings thicker, take the threads off, and it, it didn't work long term. So if you're thinking of going that path, I would suggest you just go straight to this, if indeed this is what we thought it would be. And I feel very comfortable that it will be. Um, another thing about this one is it's rated for 100 watts, whereas the, uh, the Chinese versions that you get are uh, 50 watts. So you might notice that this has four cavities as opposed to six on the cheaper Chinese ones. Um, the, their 100 watt version uh, has eight cavities. So, but the diameter, the size of the cavity is much, much smaller. And uh, so there's a little bit more going on here than meets the eye. And it's a pretty heavy unit. So I guess the next thing to do is just uh, proof it on my SVNA, take it over and install it, and uh, we'll see what kind of results we get. But real nice guy up at Intermod, and like I said, he's up in Canada. I believe he's only got one video, so uh, I was really intrigued with his presentation. And um, so this is what we've got to play with, so we'll see what happens. And hopefully we'll probably be making some more videos before too long, because... Uh, it's getting fall. I've got the firewood in for the winter. All the projects are done. One of the biggest projects we did this year was uh, uh, we installed solar ourselves, and uh, we went with the EG4 system and the wall mount battery. Cool, cool setup. It's just pretty well seamless. Does everything the way it's supposed to. Bought used panels and uh, really happy with the performance. So that's what our house is on now. Um, I thought while I was here, I'd mention one more thing. The reason I put this radio here, uh, a lot of GMRS radios out there, handhelds now. And uh, I've seen them all. I've seen the newest one um, from TID Radio. What is it called? The uh, H3. Pretty neat radio. Uh, it incorporates some of the features and, and some others that this one doesn't have. But uh, for myself, you know, doing the research and the and looking around, I, I, I don't think I can find a better radio than these little Baofeng um, GM15 probes. And, you know, they're $25, $30 radios. They have a good uh, signal ratio performance. Um, 
so good clean sound it, they're very small nice um, nice looking radios easy to program one of the things that I really like about them is on the bottom you can uh, just simply recharge them with a USB-C port and there's a little LED here that comes on to tell you you know what state it's in and that's cool so they're kind of thinking ahead when they went with this one I think these have been out only a year or two maybe two years and uh, they're just just the best most solid radio I believe you can buy in the price point and above to some degree uh, like I mentioned ocean uh, we have ocean radios on our our um, repeater station and I really like those radios but they're not cheap and the, the ocean handhelds are very nice radios everyone loves them but again you know your your magnitudes of order in price and um, they have a super heterodyne receiver in them so I guess that's a step up in in quality as far as noise but these things are just great for the price so uh, that's what I'd stock up on there is not a, uh, a program to my knowledge on chirp for these but the uh, I believe it's a GM 30s that uh, radio didity or whoever they are uh, radiotid radiotity someone will really tell me how I messed that up real bad um, it's basically the same radio I just like the housing on this one better it's a clean easy interface to use uh, one challenge with this radio the only one that really bothers me is uh, they didn't have a base station charger for these so I took one of my old Baofeng UV5Rs and I, I looked at it and I thought gosh that's almost the same but it wasn't and then I found out the polarity was reversed so all I did if you want one of these is I just simply took the screws out of the bottom reversed the polarity plugged it in and it still had a little wob wobble when it set in the in the, the, the housing here so I took a piece of uh, zip tie and used some uh, super glue and zip tied a little spacer right here in the front of this uh, where this little slot is and that makes it good and solid and it charges very well in there now and you can uh, charge it while it's on which is very convenient to have it standing up right so that's just a little side note but that's what all this is about is the radios and so like you guys I'm sure a lot of you are a little concerned about the future of our country and you know all the chaos going on and it's just generally good to have comms um, I was, I was, uh, I was in Afghanistan at one point and uh, had a little experience over there. So it it was uh, it was amazing to see just you know how things can degrade and and how the world can turn. And we're used to so much here in America and so many conveniences, and uh, they can go south. So that's part of our preparation idea or concept if you will is to uh, to try to be ready for that kind of thing coming as I know a lot of you guys are so I guess I've jabbered enough I'll go uh, uh, qualify this uh, with my SVNA install it and we'll be back and see how it did okay we've got our uh, our SVNA set up and um, so I pre-calibrated my cables and uh, set it up to a frequency span of uh, 450 megahertz to 480 megahertz. Our um, duplexer, we want it to be 462.6 on the low pass and 467.6 on the high pass, and that is a five. 5 megahertz separation which is a GMRS standard so now that it's set up I can look at it and uh, of course my equipment won't be near as good as his but the nearest I can see on mine it appears that uh, that the low end here I've got a marker set at 467.55 megahertz and um, that's what this little device is capable of seeing 
and uh, like I said it's not as good as you know high-end equipment but it does kind of show you what's going on and then uh, the separation between the the low and the high is is quite good and I'm seeing here about a uh, 70 dB uh, down swing here on the uh, on the uh, filtering from the, the top there's um, I guess a spread of about uh, 50 dB so uh, it is it is set to where it should be and now we'll just simply check the other side and uh, I've got a, uh, a dummy load here on the end um, to prevent any any noise or trap any loss so um, we'll flip the other side and see what happens but so far so good okay so now we're hooked up on the other side and uh, I've got my marker set up here and it appears according to my equipment I've got 462.3 megahertz is kind of casting that down with it and on mine I can only go in 0.5s so the next steps 0.8 and so given that that's just about perfect um, I just wanted to make sure that while this was shipped that it didn't get damaged or dropped which I don't know how much that would influence this but this is a pretty got pretty beefy um, adjustment uh, screws here so I I think everything will be okay I think our next step is to uh, to plug it in and see what happens Oh yeah. So anyhow, smart. yeah. So I'm over here with my ranch buddy Chris, and uh, we're gonna put that duplexer in. And uh, so here's what we've been using. They're pretty common. A lot of people have these because they're cheap on uh, Amazon, and they don't work for higher wattages. So what we need to do is replace that with our new one. And uh, so Chris and I are going to do that real quick. And all right, Monty, get out of here. All right, here you go, Chris. You want to check it out? All right. Open it up. There you go. That's no dirt. Yeah. Okay. So that's all good. Not need a person's way. Either, so. And there's the centaur. There's the outside. Did you bring a radio? Yes. Sir. I figured we would have. You're like that. W R U E 538. Do you read? Yeah, that's real clean. So, I guess we'll see what happens from here, huh? Awesome. Awesome. This is how clear, clear it is. The safe up on yours. Oh, on mine? Uh -huh. Test, 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 test. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we want.